Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and I'll be your instructor for this video tutorial series. And we're going to be talking about how to texture your clothing in Substance Painter and then export it out into Maya. And we'll get that all set up in Maya and show you how to get everything rendered. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're in Substance Painter, and let's go ahead and go to File, go to New, and make sure we have the ASM PBR Metal Metallic Roughness Starter Assets. Make sure that's selected. Go ahead and open up your uh, file that you exported. And so I've got, I'm just working with the shirt. Um, you guys will probably have the whole entire body and clothing all completely finished. Go ahead and uh, import that in, in here. All right, so let's go ahead and click on your object that you want to texture. Next thing you're going to do is go into the document resolution and make sure you select 2048. Now, if you're doing a single uh, tile, um, standard tiling, UV mapping, just one tile, then you're going to want to go at least to 4096. But if you're using UDIM tiles, you're going to want to uh, keep it at 2048. All right, the only thing you're going to change here is you're going to select uh, Use UV Tile Workflow, and you're going to click on Convert to, uh, UV Tiles into Individual uh, Texture Sets Legacy. If you don't do that, and you click on, on this one, it won't work. Make sure you select Convert UV Tiles. We're not really going to go in here and import any cameras or anything else. We don't have any maps baked. If you do, you'll have to import them in here. Um, and the rest is good at default. Okay, click on OK, and that should open up your uh, object. And for this example, I'm just going to use a shirt that I created. And I'm not going to get into stitching. That's going to be a video that you can watch separately. Um, I'll have that in the module so you guys can do stitching. And you want to do the stitching around areas uh, around the sleeve or stitching around the collar or you know down along the folds um, I do want to see detail like that okay All right and we also need to exaggerate um, the size or scale of the fabric so when you're far away from it, it you can still see it okay so that's really important as well so we'll talk about that all right, so if your object came in um, the way it's supposed to, then you should see the UDEM tiles over to the right-hand side. It should be under Texture Set List. Okay? All right. So let's just, for instance, if I click on 1001, you can see that I, got, I have my shirt laid out here. Uh, 1002 are the buttons, and 1003... Um, are the uh, stitches in the buttons okay so I normally I would go ahead and do the whole entire uh, costume and um, I would recommend you doing that uh, have the whole entire thing laid out I just did the shirt just to get you started but you would lay out the pants the shirt or the a skirt or whatever your costume is you would lay everything out on a UDEM tile. That would be, you can do the face separate, you can do the arms and legs separate if you want to, whatever is showing, you can do those separately. You're going to probably end up uh, deleting any faces that are underclothes because you don't really need them, you don't see them. So any part that you don't see, now just be careful that if you that you can see in you can see how far I went back in here because the camera could see that far back um, depending on how skinny your arm is or so you just gotta watch out for that and another uh, problem I see with students is they um, cut too much out up around the collar and you can see through at a certain camera angle um, and it looks like there's just empty space there so that looks really weird so be really careful what you cut out so you don't get yourself in trouble with being able to see through um, you know where the body was but you you cut it out so just just be aware of that All right the first thing you're gonna do is just kinda double check everything to make sure 
that um, these work. So if I click on that, you can see that um, if I turn them all off, nothing shows up. If I turn that on, that's the where um, the stitching is for the buttons. And then I turn that on, that's where the buttons are. And then the shirt is 1001. What I love about Substance Painter is that you can search for stuff. So if I want to uh, look for fabrics instead of going through here and try to find it, um, plus I like to set mine up to a large format so I can get a nicer, a better look at these um, textures, okay, or materials. And so you set it up any way you want to. You can also move this up and down uh, to fit however you want. Now normally I keep it pretty low so I can get a nice view. Also I can pull this over to the side like that. There you go. That gives me a better view of my shirt. Okay. So I'm going to go to large and I'm going to go ahead and type in the search uh, fabric. All right, I already know which one I want to use. Um, the cool thing is um, you can go ahead and uh, drag and drop it right over the shirt and it will place it where it needs to be. Now, obviously that's way too big so I'm going to go to tiling over on the right hand side and move that up. Now the idea is I want to be able to see it from this distance so when you zoom in you're thinking wow that's way too big but from a distance, it isn't. If you look at where you're going to be, let's say you're going to get around that close maybe, um, it's nice to have a texture that you can see. You've done all that work. Um, so when you get real close, it, it looks uh, drastically bigger. This is what I'm talking about uh, when you're rendering. It really is gonna, It's going to look nice if you have the texture a little bit bigger. Okay. Now obviously, it's you know don't get crazy that doesn't look right obviously at all so that won't work okay so I went around oh I would say seven I'm gonna type in seven for that and you can see that um, it's believable until you get really close and then then it's too large you can see okay so think about that when you're um, when you're adding a texture on there okay and I do want to see textures um, I don't want to see just plain colored shirt. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, I don't think that's what you're looking for either. You need to show some kind of detail in your fabrics. Okay, so they stick out and they look more realistic. Okay, all right. So with that said, um, I think that looks good from a distance. Okay, like I said, close up, it kind of falls apart as being too big. Okay, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to go in here and give it a color. All right, so we're still under, we got that on there. We're just going to go to the color, and nobody likes just white, so I'm more a dark white. I'm going to go into, we could do pink if we wanted to, or maybe a blue or a purple. Okay, I think I'm going to do a blue. Okay. Or turquoise. I think that would be good. And then I'm going to do a wooden button. So that's going to, I want that to stick out too as well. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go into wood. Just type in wood. There we go. And we've only got a couple choices, which kind of stinks. But uh, the dark choice might work really good. So I'm going to hover over top of the button. There we go. And drop that in. All right. So that looks pretty good. And you can see on the button, you can see what it looks like. And of course, you can mess around. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so you can see that um, I can mess around then with the walnut, which is this walnut wood. And you've got the tiling again. Um, you can look on the the, that part right there and you can make it a little bit bigger if you want to and I'm going to make it bigger just because it, a button's so small okay so the wood grain would be a lot more uh, prevalent so I'm going to go in there and look at it and that looks much much nicer there we go all right so I'm going to zoom out a little bit 
Okay, so now the next thing is what color do you want to the, the fabric to be, okay? So I know it sounds a little bit strange, but um, you could add uh, fabric to it if you want to. I'm going to try this just for fun, see what that looks like. Um, that's another piece like a wood, but I don't think that looks very good. So I'm going to use a darker... Um, so I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to go in here to wood rough and oh, let's just go ahead and click on the garbage can. All right, so let's go back to fabric and we'll go from there with that. And let's try to look for kind of a rough, maybe a rough leather. No, I want something that's going to be not perfect around. Scarf wool. Let me try that one. Okay, that looks pretty good. That will give me like a color. I'm gonna go with a darker color with that. I think that would look pretty nice, pretty sharp. Dark color, so that my it looks it just kind of sticks out more than it did. Um, looks like I ruined my original wood. Let me go back to this. Oh, I accidentally put walnut wood on there and I didn't want to do that. So I want to go back to my wood. There you go. I want that in there. Did I do a walnut? Whoop, wrong. Go back to that. There we go. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And I'm going to get back to this size. Whoops. Wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's better. All right, so there we go. That's what I have so far for the shirt. Okay, I don't like the color of the shirt, so I'm going to go back into the color, and I'm going to go make it a little bit brighter looking. There we go. Let's get a little more of a contrast. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, looks good. All right, so if you're happy with uh, what you have and you've got all your stitching in and everything's looking good, then the next step would be to export it out. But I always tell students to make sure that you go to File and you want to um, Save As. So Save As. And you can do this on your desktop. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go into and just call this Shirt and just texture or something like that and then whatever number you want to put in there so that will help you if you make a mistake or doesn't export and then you closed everything you don't want to go through what you just did so make sure you um, keep in mind that um, that if you don't save your work in here you could lose it um, another thing is we don't really uh, use um, the uh, height map. So a lot of times um, for this particular shirt texture I'm going to turn the height off and make sure that uh, normal is on. That's important. Okay. So with normal on I'm going to turn off height and I'm going to go into here to uh, normal and if I zoom in, you can see I can still see um, the normal map is actually working. So if I go to height map, it should just be nothing there. Okay. And if I turn that back on, you can see that it comes up. I'm going to turn that off. All right. So you can either hit the M key. You can hit the M key for material. That gets you back where you were. Okay. Or you can see the individual 
um, what the what the color, the height map looks like, the roughness map looks like. You can see what the metallic map looks like, and the normal map. So you can see that a shirt with a black metallic basically tells you that there's no reflection or any attributes that make it shiny. Okay, if that was you know white, then it'd be really super shiny. Okay. And the roughness, that's what the roughness looks like. Roughness, that's basically a, a, a very flat um, roughness is kind of equal to specularity. So you can see what that looks like. All right, because uh, we don't have a fabric that's going to reflect the light like a specular circle on it. So we don't want that. That would look really weird. Okay. So here's our shirt, we're all done. So now we're just gonna export it out. So I'm gonna go to export textures. All right, just make sure all those are check marked and you need to know where you're gonna place it. So I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for now and select your folder, which there's no folder there. You probably should have a folder somewhere on your desktop so they're they just not plopped down anywhere. In fact, I probably should do that, but I'll do that later, but you guys should be doing that. Um, so once you have that set up, um, make sure um, that you set this to, and you can just leave it to PBR Metallic Roughness, which is fine. Um, we also have, I think they have Arnold you know, Legacy AI Standard doesn't really matter so it's not a big deal an output template we are going to use the Arnold Udem legacy AI standard that is something we need to do okay so this is set to PBR metallic roughness and then the output template and we can go ahead and turn off the ones we don't need so we got a missive let's get rid of that we get rid of the height um, so now we're left with base color, metalness, roughness, and normal. Okay, that's all we need. Then the list of exports, you can see what we have for an export. Okay. Um, let's see, metallic roughness. Yep. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, dilation infinite, no padding pass through. It really doesn't matter. I've done the no padding pass through and either that one or the no padding pass through or the dilation infinite. Whichever one you choose, they're both going to look the same. One's going to show the texture all the way through and the one's going to just kind of have the texture and then it's going to be like blurry and spread out. So whatever. I'm going to use the dilation infinite. Output looks good. Okay, I think we're good. And then we're gonna go ahead and export. So we're good with everything else. Um, PNG should be selected, 8 bits is fine. And this is our output mode. Um, and we're good. So export it out. And that will be that. Looks like everything exported out just fine. Okay. For some reason, if uh, you run into something, some errors, um, and you're not sure what to do is when you're exporting or imp even importing your character, your object, if you have some baking issues and it doesn't bake properly, then you might want, that's because your high poly is super high poly, you might want to go into settings and you want to set up, if I remember this right, set up to uh, turn uncheck enable GPU ray tracing when you're baking maps when you have a high high poly like if, if it's eight to nine million your computer can't handle it um, because of the size you need to turn that off uh, leave it on otherwise don't worry about it if it works so everything's set up and we'll see you in the next video